Hello everyone, this is Tringy24 on my first ever top 10 list. Now you're probably wondering, what do you mean by multimedia? Basically, my top 10 trains and train related things involved in movies, games, and TV shows. Now for games, it mainly involves either the train itself, or the level it involves trains. If a movie and TV shows, it basically either involves trains, or also the train itself. Probably both in this situation. So, let's get this started, shall we? This is my top 10 trains in multimedia. Number 10. Yeah, no, surprise, surprise, he's on the list. It's that blue tank engine we all know and love. He is very low on my list because I've grown out of Thomas. Plus, let's not forget what drugs Hit Entertainment were doing when they got rid of the models and replaced them with CGI. We don't speak of the dark times. Though he was, he was my childhood, and that's why he made it to the list. He was pretty much my start for loving trains, so that's why he's number 10 on my list. Number 9. Number 9, Uncharted 2. Uncharted is a PlayStation 3 exclusive game series and involves a young adventurer named Nathan Drake. Now, I don't want to spend my entire time giving full details on the game because that's not why we're here. But if it's like anything, it's like a modern Indiana Jones. Not in a bad way, just more the fact that I can relate the closest thing I can relate to this game to. But anyway, when I mention Uncharted 2, I'm talking about Chapter 13, Locomotion, where you have to hop onto an enemy supply train and fight your way through it. Now, during this, you start off in a rail yard and eventually ride your way through a jungle. Now, fighting through the jungle, you, you have to climb on top of the train, run through it, run through it, or climb on through the sides. Now, while doing this, you're, you're also getting shot at by bad guys that are on the supply train. And later on during the level, while fighting these guys, a helicopter will come out of nowhere and start shooting down at you. Now, this makes the level a little more intense, considering that you have a giant helicopter that's trying to kill you. Later on, after more escaping the helicopter, the train rushes through a tunnel, and now you're fighting in these tight corridors while moving on a speeding train which makes it also a little more intense. But after some more fighting, you exit the tunnel, now you're in these snowy mountain range. So now the, instead of grass to both sides of you, you have a rocky wall side to one, and then a straight down cliff to the other. And then, oh, lord behold, the helicopter comes back, it tries to kill you. Not only trying to kill you, but destroys the train behind you. So after some more fighting from the helicopter, the train eventually derails from all the shooting, and then you have to climb your way out of the wrecked train. Now, I really like this level because of the intensity of it and the graphics of the game were stunning. So, it's going to sit at number 9 on my list. Number 8. Number 8, The Train from Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V was probably one of the funnest games I've ever played, but what was always fun was playing around the train. The train didn't have a huge part in this game, but me and my friend Trainman122 would always have a good time around it. Whether it be chasing it, climbing onto it, shooting cops from it, or just trying to glitch inside the cab, we just had fun with it. Not to mention the story mode has some train related levels in it. The first one involves Franklin, where you have to chase down a gang member inside a rail yard. While chasing him, the trains are doing switching, where this is the only time the trains ever use this yard, and you eventually use Chop to search the box through the boxcars and find them. The next one involves Trevor. This, in this one, you have to chase down a train with expensive items on board while riding a dirt bike. What's cool about this level is that you have to ride the dirt bike on top of the train, then hijack the train itself. So now you're in control of it, but only for a minute. And at the end, you have to ram the train into an oncoming train on top of the bridge, while Trevor jumps off and lives. Yeah, they always make that kind of thing. And the wreck was really cool in my opinion. And the last one involves Michael, also a little bit of Trevor, where this one's a choice for the last heist. The train choice in this situation is that you have to take a helicopter and steal a locomotive and car. Not joking, you literally have to steal a locomotive and car with a helicopter. But before you can steal the train and car, Michael throws a switch that sends the train to a siding which then comes to a complete stop. Then Trevor comes in with the helicopter, steals the locomotive and car, and then delivers it to two flatbed trucks. Later on, after the heist, you load your goods into the train that you stole and watch it drive off with the goods. So the train was fun, and it's a good involvement in the game, and that's why it's number 8 on my list. Number 7. Number 
7, Team Fortress 2. Team Fortress 2 is probably one of my favorite games of all time. It's a first person shooter that is free to play on Steam. The game takes place around the 70s in the United States, and it's number 7 on my list because of the train. It doesn't have a name, but it's seen on maps as a prop or even as a dynamic item to the map. For example, on map CP Well and CP Freight Final. Both involve moving trains that you can be killed by. In Freight Final, it's the locomotive and some cars that go fairly fast, so when, if you're fighting and you need cover fast, a train might be there to cover you. But in CP Well, it's just a locomotive that goes very fast through the map. Unfortunately, I do not have footage of CP Well. But if you want to see CP Well, here's CP Well in a nutshell. Yeah. That's basically it. But anyway... So, when if it's going really fast and you don't have time to run out of the way, it's basically going to hit you and kill you. Which is kind of cool, but it's not the only reason why TF2 is number 7. End of the Line, a recent update that came out for TF2. Originally a source fi filmmaker made by James McVie, the film was about a runaway train Blue Team sends with a bomb on board to destroy Red Team's base. If you haven't seen the vid, I suggest you check it out. The video did not involve talking though. It, is a, it was like a silent film, but there was music and sound effects, and it was an awesome sound track in my opinion, and it really made up for the no dialogue. During the production of this video, Valve noticed the video and asked if he wanted to become an update for the game. He agreed, and it took a long time for this update and film to show up. The update was very small and mainly involved new cosmetics. I liked it. There's a lot more details to go over. So, I liked the short film, it was awesome, the update was okay, and the train was badass, and that's why it sits at the number 7 spot. Number 6. Number 6, Silver Streak. It's about a murder on a tra train called Silver Streak from Los Angeles to Chicago. In my mind, it's kind of like a parody to Murder on the Orient Express. Anyway, Gene Wilder plays as a main character, and for those who don't know who Gene Wilder is, he's the original Willy Wonka, meeting Richard Pryor later on in the movie. But I'm not here to give away a review about the movie, I'm here to talk about the Silver Streak itself. The railroad in this movie was called Amroad, which is pretty much a non-copyrighted Amtrak. But the units they used were Canadian Pacific F units. The paint scheme of the locomotives kind of gives it away. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find clips from Silver Streak itself, so these are clips from the trailer, so please bear with me on this. They showed this train in a lot of nice shots, like it could have been a real Amtrak train, while using stainless steel coaches as the concepts that made up the train. More CP units are shown in the background of this movie later on, being either a CP GP9 and a SW7, it looks like. An interesting fact about this movie, if no one's caught on by now, th is that this movie was primarily filmed in Canada, at the exception of the Los Angeles Station. But the Chicago Union Station was never Chicago Union Station. It was actually Toronto's Union Station. Apparently, there's a famous building in Toronto that you could see before the train ran, ran into the station. That's another reason why I like Silver Streak. It, it had that really interesting crash scene where the train smashed through the inside of the station. So. Silver Streak ends up at number 6 on my list. To be continued. <laughs>